Hello, my name is Noah Phillip. Uh, I am a professor of psychiatry and human behavior at the Albert Medical School at Brown University, uh, where I'm also the lead for mental health research at the Center for Neurorestoration and Neurotechnology at VA Providence. Uh, here to talk to you about uh, methods uh, for our ongoing first in human study using low intensity focus ultrasound for depression. Um, and so I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, my mission is to design, develop, and deploy new treatments for depression and post-traumatic stress and suicide reduction. And really everything that you'll see today uh, really can be seen through this lens. Uh, here are my disclosures, uh, really not relevant uh, for this particular talk. Um, and I really want to start by reminding everyone that depression is a terrible illness. Um, it is the leading cause of disability worldwide. And it's just awful. Um, I, I share with you here a slide from the World Health Organization highlighting the impact uh, of depression. And we have a number of treatments uh, for depression right now. The mainstays really are two. Uh, it's uh, medication, uh, pharmacotherapy, with a reasonable degree of efficacy, but with some significant side effects. Uh, as well as psychotherapy or talk therapy, uh, also with reasonable degrees of efficacy, um, but with difficulties with access uh, and otherwise. We have a number of other treatments that are device-based, uh, highlighting particular transcranial magnetic stimulation, electroconvulsive therapy, um, but those uh, largely rely upon indirect effects uh, and can be very difficult to access or have some significant uh, stigma associated with their use in, in the case of electroconvulsive therapy. So what we're talking about here, however, is low intensity focus ultrasound uh, as a, a focal and non-invasive and reversible form of deep brain stimulation. And so whenever we're gonna think about deep brain stimulation, the first thing we need to do is think about what is going to be our target. And for this study, I chose the amygdala. And I chose the amygdala for a number of reasons. And the most important one is that it is not accessible uh, with any intervention uh, currently right now, with the exception of surgery or, or, uh, or otherwise. It's involved in every single psychiatric disorder. So not just depression, but also anxiety, post-traumatic stress, schizophrenia, what have you. And this core area that's involved in fear and emotion regulation. And if we can modulate this region, what this means is that we're going to be able to have some important lessons learned that are gonna be relevant for an enormous number of other psychiatric illnesses. So to do this, uh, we're using the Brain Sonics device. Uh, this is a single uh, MRI, a single transducer that is MRI compatible. Uh, they have a number of different focal lengths, um, uh, 55 millimeters, 65 millimeters, and 80 millimeters, as well as a 30 millimeter device. Um, and it looks uh, something like this. Um, and to, to be more precise, uh, this is a 65 uh, millimeter transducer. And what it's doing is creating a small ellipsis or a cigar shaped zone of sonication. Um, so this 65 millimeter transducer has a sonication zone with a, a focal depth at 60 millimeters, six zero, uh, with a shallow edge and a deep edge at uh, roughly 47 millimeters and 77 millimeters respectively. Uh, and so what you have is a sonication zone that is about 30 millimeters long uh, and a four millimeters uh, max width. Um, and what it looks like when you apply the sonication uh, is something like this. Um, I put this here on a, um, uh, uh, over a, a cup of water. And I want you just to watch the very uh, top of the meniscus uh, as, I, as I run this video. So you can really see the millimeter precision uh, in, this, in this video here. So our methods, uh, broadly speaking, uh, are that folks will come into the clinic, we'll do a series of uh, baseline assessments. Uh, this includes uh, psychiatric assessments, neurologic assessments, neuropsychological assessments, as well as baseline uh, neuroimaging. Um, and uh, folks are then um, uh, receive a CT scan. Uh, and important to get a CT scan as a gold standard to evaluate bone density for use in later modeling approaches. Uh, 
then they are randomized to either our target site, which the is the amygdala, uh, or the contralateral somatosensory cortex, uh, left S1. Um, and so we chose S1 as an active control area, um, also hopefully leveraging the fact that the bone composition is different over S1 uh, and also will be attenuating uh, any beam that's going in while providing us a, a sensation uh, when the device is on. So it's really an active control. Um, the uh, uh, immediately after the sonication, um, I should say, uh, while this, uh, immediately after the sonication, we run a series of functional MRI scans, uh, bold EPI imaging, ASL, and others um, uh, to evaluate uh, the effects on the amygdala uh, and then ask patients many questions about how they feel. Um, and then immediately also do a series of clinical scans designed at detecting any microvascular injuries. So these are T1s, T2s, SWIs, and flares. Um, the assessments, uh, like I said, occur immediately thereafter at 24 hours and then at one week. Um, and then assuming that we see no injuries or problems or otherwise, uh, well, uh, patients are then uh, cross over and receive sonication to their other uh, target or control area. Uh, and you can see our device settings here, uh, which really are uh, at the upper limit of the FDA maximum for, um, uh, for uh, safe use at this point. Um, in this next slide, uh, you can see one of my staff members demonstrating what it's like to wear the Brain Sonics device. It is perhaps not the most attractive hat. Uh, looks a bit like a hockey puck strapped to the side of the head, uh, but really does work quite well in terms of its application. Um, and the targeting is done in the scanner. Um, and uh, it is important to do first in human work in the scanner so we can be absolutely sure that what we observe is causal, uh, that there's a clear cause and effect for anything that we do um, uh, and any effects that we're able to measure. It also allows us to do the targeting without any interpolation from neuronavigation or otherwise. Um, you can see that the uh, targeting is done um, uh, on the lower left of your screen there, where there's going to be a series of MR-based fiducials that we use to line up the uh, a, a line of sight uh, where the focal zone is going to be going. And I'll show you a little bit more about what that looks like uh, in this next video. Um, here. So there's a series of MR fiducials, really a series of rings that allow us to set up a series of perpendicular lines uh, to ensure that the beam is going in three-dimensional space uh, where we want it to go. Um, and uh, demonstrated here, this is one of the brains of one of my staff members um, uh, showing that uh, we've lined up the targeting in the correct way. And so the blue or green beams are going through our uh, brain area of interest. Um, and at this point, what we do is we take this information offline, we measure the focal length, uh, and do a series of computational modeling to evaluate where the beam uh, might be going. More on that to come later. Um, and so we do have some early experiences to share with you. Um, so our, our first patient uh, received sonication in last October. Uh, the study is currently ongoing, so I don't have results to, to share with you, but will as soon as they're available. Um, I'm happy to say at least yet, uh, there are no serious adverse events, um, uh, but it is an ongoing study, hence the dot, dot, dot on the screen here. Um, and we have some really exciting ongoing collaborations to develop and further validate uh, the computational modeling to evaluate where the beam may be going. Uh, and so more on this to come, uh, hopefully in the near term future, but very exciting uh, to be developing those kinds of tools. Um, and with that, um, I'm going to close. I want to thank you for your attention. I want to thank my staff highlighted here in their Bitmoji form, uh, as well as the federal agencies that are involved in the study. Uh, this really was started by an equipment grant from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. The research itself funded by the National Institutes of Mental Health and overseen through an investigational device exemption uh, from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Uh, and really pleased to say, uh, now supported also by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. Um, if you have questions, uh, my email is there below, noah underscore philip at brown.edu, uh, or you can reach out via Twitter uh, at noah as philip md. Uh, thank you for your time, and I appreciate your attention.